Hello, my name is Scott Bell. I'm a medical student at the University of Calgary, and I'd like to take you through some of the work I did during my PhD at McGill University in the lab of Dr. Carl Ernst. This is a study that starts when our lab was introduced to a family that was thought to have an unknown neural developmental disease. This was a family with two healthy parents, but two of the three children in the family were affected with severe neural developmental symptoms, including spasticity, epileptic encephalopathy, and developmental delay. To investigate if this was a new genetic disease, we, as well as our collaborators at the University of Montreal, headed by Dr. Philippe Campo, launched a recruitment effort internationally to see if we could identify any similar patients. And we were able to identify 10 patients, all of whom had no, uh, no effective diagnosis for some very severe neural developmental symptoms that were almost identical to the patients that we had originally identified. And what we found by genetically sequencing these individuals was that all of them had mutations in both copies of, of the gene ACTL6B. And what this suggested was that we had found a new neurodevelopmental genetic disease that seemed to follow a recessive pattern of inheritance whereby uh, the mother and the father of an affected family would have one defective copy of the gene, which by chance both could be inherited by an offspring, which would result in that, uh, in that individual having the disease. We also found a separate smaller subset of patients that seemed to follow a different de novo pattern of inheritance. These patients had related but slightly distinctive symptoms from the first cohort. They didn't have an epileptic encephalopathy and they had more of autistic rhett-like stereotypes of behavior. Now, both of these cohort of patients were very interesting because ACTL6B had never previously been identified to be associated with human disease, but was known to be very important in neurodifferentiation. And it was known to function as a sort of light switch in the developmental process, whereby a dividing immature neural cell could become a mature neuron through the action of ACTL6B. And the mechanism behind that was that ACTL6B functions as a sort of targeting complex for these large amalgamations of proteins called the BATH complex. And ACTL6B allows the BATH complex to move from specific parts of the DNA where the BATH complex is bound and has been upregulating genes involved in more immature neural processes neural processes like proliferation, and instead drag that BAF complex over to areas of the genome, the areas of the genome that are more associated with mature, uh, differentiated processes like upregulating up genes and axon and dendritic development. And so in order to investigate and show that mutations in ACTL6B could indeed cause disease in humans, we used induced pluripotent stem cells to take both skin cells from affected individuals and controls, make those cells into stem cells, and then push those stem cells to become neurons that were genetically matched to the skin cells that they were originally derived from. We also used CRISPR-Cas9 genome editing to both remove ACTL6B function in control cells, as well as restore ACTL6B function in the cells of affected individuals. And what we found was that if we removed ACTL6B function, from control cells, we had a dramatic decrease in the amount of dendrite and axonal formation that was going on. And conversely, if we restored ACTL6B function in the cells of affected individuals, we were able to have a dramatic increase in the amount of dendrite and axonal formation. And what this suggested to us was that the symptoms that were yeah, being experienced by these patients were due to mutations in the gene ACTL6B, which were causing aberrant regulation of the BATH complex, leading to changes in gene expression, which ultimately led to abnormal neural development. And now that this research has been published, it's our hope that our lab, in combination with labs around the world, can go forward and start exploring therapeutic options for the patients that are affected with these diseases as well as exploring how the ACTL6B gene contributes to neural development. So I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the stupendous amount of support that I've received from both my own PI, Dr. Uh, Carl Ernst, as well as our collaborator, Dr. Philippe Campo, from the funding agencies that have supported the, our work, as well as the institutions that we call home. And if anyone has any questions about this study or my work, I would encourage you to reach out to me on Twitter or via email.
thank you very much.